Because a lot of sisters don't, a lot of women, black women need to understand something, that your biggest enemy is not a white woman. Your biggest problem is not, N-O-T, not a white woman. Your biggest enemy is Marisol. Your biggest enemy is the Hispanic woman. She understands how to season food. She understands sensuality, femininity, and she was raised in a patriarchal environment. The difference between femininity and fake femininity is amazing. The Latina problem. Black women, you have a problem. Her name is Maria Marisol. Love some brothers. And if you notice, they are the old, go, go to the old black side of town and you will see Hispanics. And the difference used to be the Hispanic men and the men of each group used to kind of keep each other out of the way. Now, interracial dating, intercultural dating, whatever, is not as taboo as it used to be. And when you're talking about what you bring to the table, these women are bringing tables. Oh, shit. Oh, my God. A lot of women get upset when you ask, what do you bring to the table? And these women are bringing tables. Adios, me, oh, papi. How are you? Yeah, your lead speak that shit. Yeah, they bring in tables. I don't like hot food, but trust me, I will get over it. I will, I'm going to learn how to eat. I'm going to start, you hear me playing bossa nova music? I already do salsa and the tango and the merengue and the samba. I'm going fuck around starting. Dun, 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 dun. You know what, man? Y'all get mad when brothers date out. Hey, well, you know, split the difference. Get Maria. Get Maria. It's not, it's, it's not really like dating out. It's not really like dating out if it's Maria, is it? Hey. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. Let's give it one time for the Godfather. You know I say a moment of silence for the Godfather real quick. Y'all knew I had to do this video, right? I wasn't going to be able to let this go. No matter how long ago he said these words, they still resonate until this day and probably for many, many moons to come. The Godfather himself, Kevin Samuels, sorry, Kevin Samuels, said to us, the biggest threat to black women is not white women, but it's going to be Hispanic women. And I hope that you gentlemen will allow me, just for the sake of who I am and the content I create, I hope you will allow me to throw Filipinas in there as well. Okay? He started off by saying one thing that was profound but funny but realistic all at one time. He said, Hispanic women know how to properly season their food. And that makes them a threat as well. Think about it. We love to eat, right? I think that's any man. But we love women who know how to cook. Now, if you're Caucasian, ladies, don't ever take it as a sign of disrespect. But history has shown quite a few men that sometimes it's hit and miss when it comes to dealing with women from that part of the world, right? <laughs> Not that part of the world, but, you know, Caucasian women in general, it's hit and miss, man. Sometimes it's bland. Sometimes they get it right. Sometimes they don't. It's just the way that it is. But Hispanic women throughout culture, history, tradition, the way they prepare their foods, a lot of love, a lot of seasoning and the like. And gentlemen, we love that shit. And that's just the basics, knowing how to properly season food. And you can call this racist if you want to. I don't give a shit. But I promise you this. If a young lady knows how to properly fry chicken, there, there's meaning there, there's meaning to that. It's meaningful. You feel me? And I've learned that Filipinas know how to properly cook as well. They know how to properly use their seasonings and things like that to create flavor within their food. I've learned that through experiences. And, of course, from his perspective, Hispanic women can do that as well. And then he got into the segue of talking about asking women what they bring to the table. And then there's always this big I bring myself to the table type argument. And it, it blows up in a lot of women's faces. With all due respect, it does blow up because guys are looking for a little bit more than just 
sex and things of that nature. We're looking for somebody to be our counterparts, our wives, somebody who will care for us, right? Not just the fact that you're just available to have sex when, you know, whenever it's proper or whenever it's, you know, needed. It's got to be a little bit more than that, right? And then he was like how Hispanic women, they bring the table with them, not necessarily just saying that they are the table, but they bring the table, they set the table, they are part of the table, they set the table, they do what they need to do for their men. And yes, if you ask me, as a man who travels, as a man who is an advocate for utilizing the passport for what I believe has been blessed upon us to do so, I believe that this is why men should travel abroad. Right. And one of the things that people seem to overlook about one of the main arguments that I do make, because I don't make it as often as I need to. I kind of look at traveling abroad and experience and dating women from different cultures as somewhat of an experiment. Right. You don't know what you're going to like when you get there. You don't know if you're going to, you know, fuck with it or if you're not going to mess with it. Right. I tell you straight up, the Philippines is not for everybody. 100 percent. When I look at you with this camera right now. Whoever is listening to me at this moment, I will be the first to tell you the Philippines is not for everybody. And it's not so much the women that you deal with, it's the country in general, right? There's a lot going on there. There's a lot of things that you'll see that are turn, that could be a turnoff for a lot of guys. And you might find that in other Hispanic countries. But what I'm saying is at least you have the opportunity to do it, right? If you think, if it, if it comes to, if it comes to like that, you know what, traveling just ain't for me, Right? <laughs> if you have this thought process in your head, it's just not for me. You know what I'm saying? It was fun. It was cool. You know, we got to see things and experience things. And I just kind of realized that I can't, you know, relate to any of the women here or feel like I can't, you know, connect with any of the women in whatever country you choose to travel to. Guess what? The U.S. ain't going nowhere. I mean, I have found very few situations where a man has traveled and said, yo, I'm going to go back to dating women in the West. That is not usually the backtrack that a lot of men will make. But in any case, if you do, at least you tried, right? At least you gave it an opportunity. At least you said, fuck it, man. Let me see what it's like over here. I hear a lot of my traveling brethren talking about it. I hear a lot of my passport bros, passport kings talking about, yo, man, let's see what it's like on this side of the world, right? It doesn't have to be the DR. It doesn't have to be Colombia. It could be whatever country you have fantasized about going to, whether it be Japan, whether it be El Salvador, Ecuador, and places like that, other um, South American countries that you don't really hear a lot of brothers talking about traveling to outside of the DR, Colombia, and places like Brazil, right? Outside of the norms when it comes to traveling to Southeast Asia, outside of the Philippines, outside of Thailand, you know, Japan, and places like that. Maybe you want to go to Taiwan. Maybe you want to go to, you know... South Korea, or maybe you want to go to, you know, Vietnam and Cambodia and places like that. These are all viable options to you. Your passport is your viable option to at least explore. That's all it is for me. And that's what I try to preach when I talk about traveling abroad. If it don't work out for you, if, it, if for some god awful reason you can't find the connection that you need to make or that you feel that you can make, guess what? You can always go back to the U.S. if you want to and deal with women there. It's not as if you do it and it's do it or bust, right? I think that's the mindset that you have as a man. But I will say this. There is very rare, and I can't think of anyone off the top of my head right now, but it's very rare that a man backtracks and says, well, yeah, I tried dating women abroad. It didn't work out for me, so I'm going to go back to dating women in the West. It just don't happen that way. So when a brother Kevin Samuels tells African-American young ladies, that their biggest threat is Hispanic women. I feel that shit too. I do. I feel like women abroad in general can be a very, very, very big threat. And I understand, ladies, y'all gonna probably hit us with, I ain't threatened by none of them. They can't do what I could do. And, and I know I know the argument that the majority of women will make. And it's okay. You're allowed to make those arguments, right? It is what it is. But I'm telling you, when we can get damn near anything and everything that we need from our relationship, the pure essence of it all, the bare necessities, the essentials that a man needs from his woman, and we can find that in another woman that doesn't necessarily represent women for our own background, and we don't necessarily have to deal with the extras that come with it, it's not going to be a difficult choice for a lot of guys. It's just not going to be difficult at all to say, yo, I'd rather be rocking over here than staying over here, right? And that's all I'm saying, right? 
Now, I know I know people are going to have their arguments and they may say your statements. It's okay. You are allowed to do so. You are allowed to do so. But what I will tell you is this. I would love for y'all to just take a moment and think about it. And think about what's really going on, right? Of course, like all men say, you're going to find somebody that wants to sleep with you. Absolutely. You're going to find somebody that will still wear that ass out. If I can be honest and be a little vulgar with that. You're going to find somebody who still wants to do that. Women, you will never lose that. But for those of you who are looking for good quality men to build with and all of that stuff, I do see a lot of them building quality foundational relationships with women abroad. And a lot of people like to believe it's the downfall of the black community, men dating abroad and stuff like that. I can't really argue against that, but I don't really want to make that the focal point of the argument because again, there are and have been and probably will continue to be successful black relationships. So don't ever, I never look down upon that or I never say, oh my God, the community itself is on the downturn because men are choosing to date abroad. I just don't think that. I just believe that the ability to be able to explore what they give us, the ability to be able to explore what's out there for us is definitely a threat. And if y'all don't see it that way in the years to come, when you turn around and you realize what you're left with, <laughs> when you realize what you're left with, your pookies and your ray rays, when you realize that you're going to build with a man or try to build with somebody that can't really build with you. You're just going to be dragging and supporting him for the duration of your lives together as opposed to being with somebody that can build with you. I think that's when the reality will eventually set in. All right? The, the reality will eventually set in that your biggest threats will take over. And you know what's even scarier than that? I think these women know it. <laughs> you know, if I'm being honest, I think they know that they are taking black men from this culture, you know, and they and they and they embrace it because they genuinely have love for the black men. It's not as if it's a game to them. They're genuinely there to participate in the relationship and be a part of the relationship and willing to play their role, right? Not necessarily their gender role, but play their role, play their part in whatever it is that the man is asking them to do in a relationship without headache, without arguments, without fighting, without any of the extra shit that a man can that a man could actually live without. And as a result, ladies and gentlemen, I guess we're just going to have to wait and see where it's going. I mean, I can see how it's going, and I think a lot of us can see where this is heading, the trend. And eventually, there'll probably be probably like I said, man, I do see it being that there will be far more black men in interracial relationships then there will be black men in relationships with black women in the future. That statistic, I do believe that percentage is likely to shift very, very soon. And like I said, you can't help who you love. You love who you love, ladies and gentlemen. So I don't want it to be a conversation that creates any type of divide. I just want to speak from what I'm seeing personally in the movement and that the gentlemen who are looking to find quality relationships are looking to find those quality relationships with women abroad. Okay? And that's just me, man. Maybe y'all see it different. That's what the comment section is that's what the comment section below is for. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please feel free to share, like, comment, and subscribe. Guys, if you want to support in any capacity, there's a thank you button in the corner that you could drop a couple dollars on the good docs books, PayPal. Cash App, all this stuff linked in the description. Appreciate you guys locking in. Doc's on to the next one. Y'all take care. Y'all stay blessed, man. Doc is out. Peace.